podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Get yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my day all gone. But y'all don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. Make sure you make it there, and yeah. <laughs> what is Just going on? Uh, what is I'm uh, tongue tied. Man, you know, hey, man, when you when you special at this, like myself, you know, what I'm saying you don't, you never miss, don't miss, you a never beat. break. Ain't no pressure ever gonna do anything because my uh, the steps of a good man. It's all about the Lord. Lord. Hey, man, check it, man. We on Boss Talk 101 today, y'all. We got a special, special treat for you guys, man. Y'all got to check this one out, man. Sit down, get you a cup of coffee or Coca-Cola or, or Sprite or, or, or some water. Water. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is about to be a good one, man. D. Gordon Franks is here, man, and he has uh, a lot of info that he's going to provide us with today, man. This guy right here, man, he been military he wrote books he's he's done a pl just a litany of things man and I, i'm so honored to have you on boss talk 101 what a boss is talk thank you young man. man let's get to it so um i like to go back and dig deep down as a child growing up because our audience don't know who gordon franks is so let me know where were you born and raised a uh, little town outside of detroit called okay. port huron michigan okay about uh, 30,000 people. Mm. Yeah. This crowd Michigan back then, because when I think about Michigan right now, um, people thought about, people talk about how, you know, the gangs, the um, violence, all of that sort of things in that's Michigan. That's Detroit. Even back then? Oh, no, no not so much. Oh, that's then. Detroit. Okay. Yeah. So it didn't affect your small town that's close? No. Mm. no. What was it like growing up there? Idyllic. Really? For lack of a better word. Yeah, and it was uh, biracial. That's what I was wondering. We more blacks, to, more whites. Uh, we went to our grade school was mm -hmm. predominantly black, but okay. after that we matriculated into junior high. It was predominantly white. White. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. How far is that from Saginaw and all those? Oh, quite a way. We are 50 miles northeast of Detroit. Okay, Ooh, okay. Michigan is the map. Mm -hmm. We are right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. About a quarter mile from Canada. Okay, I see where yeah. you're at. I, I definitely yeah. remember my son yeah. went up there and was working way up there by Canada, so he had to be pretty close. And I was like, man, and I seen him up there with mm -hmm. one of my friends that mm -hmm. got a trucking company. And I just, that's how I, when I first started saying, dang, Canada right there. Yeah. So I didn't realize yeah. that. Were you raised um, with your mom and dad in the household? Uh, yes. Okay, and your how many siblings do y'all have? Do you have? There were five of us on my mother's side, and a gang of us on my daddy's side. Oh, daddy so, was a rolling stone. Yes, he was. <laughs> but he was in the household. No, that my daddy was in the household, but my father was not. Oh, okay, yeah. got you. So, did you know your father? Yes. Okay, yeah. but he was just not around. Did you spend time with him? Yes. Okay, so he was very, very instrumental in your your upbringing. Yeah, kind of. But like I said, I had a daddy. So that, that was there all the time, all your life. Like, well, until how old I, were you when your father left? Oh, my mother and father were never married. Okay, and my mother married my stepfather. Well, mm -hmm. my choice, your father, daddy, mm -hmm. my daddy, when I was two. When and you were then two, he adopted me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, well, you were young, so you, you didn't care at that age. You you Not grew really. up thinking that that was your father. No, I grew up knowing he wasn't. But okay. Still, you know. Okay, that's cool. Wow. You know, when I look, when I started looking down that, that history road, I, I you, you went to the military early on. Yeah, I uh, was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. and. Um, what was you doing? Yeah, what were you oh, doing? I was everything. Everything. What do, could a man? Because this was this was this, what the seventies, sixties, sixties. What 60s. could you do in the sixties that was so bad back then? The things that they did back then now they've legalized. Mm -hmm. So what? Some well, of them. <clears throat> and how well, old I, were you at this time when you're talking about you were doing things you wasn't supposed to be doing? Oh, I was um, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Okay, twenty. Yeah. What were you doing? Drugs. 
Oh, you was doing drugs? Yeah, selling, back selling then. drugs. You were selling then. drugs? Selling drugs back then. What uh, was the drug of choice? Yeah, because... Heroin. Heroin. That's Heroin. What, we talking to the Frank Lucas... That's before uh, crack uh, came um, in. That's before... Yeah, that that's was... That's even before crazy. Frank Lucas, yeah. probably. I think, yeah. was this before? Because that yes. was Vietnam. No, yeah. this was during that time because Frank Lucas went over there and he brought drugs back on the plane. Yeah. So this so was, was during that time. time. Was that something... When I think about the Frank Lucas story... Is that something that you could fathom that one could bring drugs from with through the military back to the oh, U.S.? Oh, certainly, I, I did it. You did it. Yeah, I did. How? Give me a breakdown on how you would get drugs from over there, and they had the drugs over there. Did they had coca yeah. leaves? Huh? No. What was? I mean, what did? No, it wasn't cocaine. It was no, heroin. It was I messed heroin. that up. Uh, so, how did you get it back? Well, um, back in the day. When you took Polaroid pictures, okay, you would peel it and put it inside put of it, it on a harder mat. Okay. Well, you would take the drugs and put them in a plastic bag, some type of plastic, and then take two of those backs and stick them together, and just write on the envelopes. And you could don't, never do not men, and they just went on in. But that was. I wasn't doing it on any grand right. scale. Yeah, because okay. you, you, it couldn't have been that, like when, I, I know if, on the movie Frank Lucas, they was putting it in the caskets. Mm -hmm. Inside of the caskets, they was out, uh, literally, that the, this had to be somebody that was deeply embedded inside of how they transported the bodies back over to the U.S. And it had it to where they had this thing yeah, pretty much designed movie. where you could, you could put, say, keys of heroin. Well, in the when, casket. When I when I came back to the United States, um, they told us, "Don't bring anything back because you've been over here a year. You go back home and get caught with some drugs, and guess what? You're going to jail." Correct. So when I got off the plane, that was it. No, no, no customs, no nothing. And no, I could have had a body in my duffel bag. And they wouldn't have known. They wouldn't even know. No. And that was only because you're military. They didn't really care. Right. They trusted y'all. I don't know what they trusted. <laughs> they didn't even think about it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But the, they the scared reasons, us enough right. that we didn't want to have didn't anything, want to. You know? But the reason why people would go overseas to go try to do that is because they would get it cheaper or they got a better connect or what well, was it? It, it was a better drug. Better it's drug. a better drug over yeah. there. Uh, back then, More we, pure. Were, we were smoking it. Mm. More to, uh, just put it in a cigarette smoke it you know really so y'all wasn't injecting it no mm. what did it's, it do to you when you smoked it it got you high it's the same thing as if you did inject it yeah well not not as intense not but as it intense got you, it got you high it wow. would make you nod out okay so you get over there and now you get on those on that how hard is it for you to stop doing it because you were on it for how long how long were you addicted to it for um I'm going to say five years, maybe. But my addiction was different. Um, I didn't think I was addicted because I didn't use all, all, all the, the time. time, every day. And I, you know, I kept buying cars and beautiful women, and I told myself to lie that I wasn't a junkie, but in reality I was. I was just a functioning junkie. Wow, mm. man! Did you have to go to rehab to, to yeah, kick went, it? I went to rehab. It, it, it was a it was an ongoing process. Uh, I went to a veterans rehab, mm -hmm. inpatient, uh, for fifty eight days, mm -hmm. and the program lasted from um, months to six, supposedly six months to nine months. But they uh, they kicked me out after. Uh, Why? I wasn't doing what I supposed to be doing. But I learned something there. What did you learn? I had a beautiful woman by the name of Carmelita Witherspoon. They give you all this information. She told me, you know what? Pick what you can use and the rest of that shit. Throw it over and keep stepping. And I did. So what did you use to help you um, kick that? Well, I always knew that my mother didn't raise me to be no dope fiend. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this was just a phase I was going through. 
And then I went to jail. I had been weaning myself off, and then when I went to jail, I stayed in jail seven months on a 20-count secret indictment. So that helped you kick it? Yeah. After I, I didn't have any withdrawal. When you I didn't went. No, have any? No. I've never met nobody who's never had withdrawals. Like I everybody, any, I thought like you I always say, have was, withdrawals. Well, maybe you do, but I had been weaning myself. Weaning yourself off. Okay, yeah. got it. And after I got out, I was like, wow. The physical, that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. It's not as the mental. Yeah, mental. Because I heard somebody, I met someone who, but this, I think they were on crack though. But they kicked it, but they said it's a hard thing every day because you walk in past and it's like you can smell it. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it messes with them every day. But every day they got to tell themselves, no, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Well, that was, it, drugs were easy for me. to get. Once mm -hmm. I stopped, I, I, I relapsed once. Mm. Um, but um, I, I had had enough. When you get enough, you just... Because you know, of depression? Why did you relapse? Uh I started getting money again, <laughs> pocketfuls of money, and uh, thinking I can handle it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just do a little, and I'm not going to let myself get back to where I was, and that's just, yeah. People feel like, because I know even younger kids nowadays, I'm not going to say that they're on heroin or crack or anything like that, but because nowadays even weed is a drug. Anything that alter your everyday thinking and they feel like okay i can function um regular on any sort of drugs do you believe that to be true taking any sort of drug well personally mm -hmm. it's just me i don't consider marijuana a drug you know this is something the lord has made mm -hmm. you ain't got to do nothing to it and so so i know people that smoke weed every day and they and function, function perfectly function well perfectly yeah Got it. Yeah. Wow. Y'all, y'all, you, you trying to figure out what that weed do? I'm just asking. Well, uh, it, it's not bad if a person is uh, able to maintain and not, see, mentally, a lot of people can't maintain with or without the dang drugs. Mm -hmm. And they get a little something on it. They try to get bionic and they get bionic and losing because they was a loser before they started because they won't change the way they do things. You know what I mean? The hardest drug for me to overcome Nicotine. Wow. Really? Yeah. Um, I had to get hypnotized. Does that work? That's $35 I've ever spent in my life. Really? I tried to get somebody to hypnotize me once. It didn't work. Well, I did. I went to, uh, it was um, 22 of us, I think. Went to a ho uh, Holiday Inn and we went in. How long did it take? 15 minutes. And you were hypnotized? The session lasts for two hours, and you, you talk, and you go through all of this, and he says, okay, I'm going to put you in a trance. And I'm like, yeah, right. So yeah. I listen to what he said. You know, your eyes will become heavy. heavy. I couldn't open them. I'm like, wow. So after a while. Were you talking to yourself in your head at this no, time? No, I'm, I'm listening to what okay, he said. Okay, to what he said. My girlfriend. A woman at the time, she went with me. She was doing it because I was doing it. And she almost fell out the chair next to me. I didn't <laughs> see it, but the guy told me. He was getting ready to stop. Anyway, uh, we went through it. And he said, um, I'm going to count to three. And when you wake up, everything in your life will be the same, except you will not smoke. One, two, three. And you and never went, had an urge went, to smoke yeah, after right. that. So we went out to dinner that night. And um, after dinner, after you eat, you get that urge. Urge to smoke afterwards, I right. I never got it. And I was like, whoa, wow. it worked. And that was in 1992. That's B. Y'all smokers need to go try that, okay? <laughs> really, I tell, people, kicking I tell it. people, hypnotism, it more if you want to, because my woman now, man, after a while, she was like, I'm just smoking at work. And then... Uh, I'm just smoking the car on the way from home. And so then, it didn't work on her? No. Nah, then I'm going to smoke out in the patio and then in the hallway and then just in the bathroom. And, but see, she didn't want to quit. She was just doing it because I did it. Right. Yeah. 
Sweet Melanie. So I wonder, yeah. I wonder why it worked on her. I mean, on you and didn't because work on her. I wanted because, it. Because, so you have to want it for it to work. I want it to work. Got yeah. it. Wow. Um, so you, at some point, you become a guy who is a man who knows how to deal with women quite well. Uh, I seen the pictures in the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when did you get into pimping? Well, to be honest, I read the book, Iceberg Swim, back in the day. Ice-T mm -hmm. told us the same thing, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And when I read that book, I knew this is, this is me. Mm. Yeah, this is me. And uh, I dibbled and dabbled and, you know, um, turned out a, uh, one of my high school sweethearts. Turned her out? Yeah. Uh, you, you like I'm gonna go and try it on her first. Yeah, no, she wanted to make money, so cool, go to work. But there are other ways to make money. She's in high school. I was out, but go get a job. Job? No, <laughs> well, I got listen. I got fired from Chrysler's, General Motors, and Ford. All of them fired Why? me. Why? Before ninety days, I wasn't built for the factory. <laughs> I wouldn't go to work. I uh, got it. Yeah. But you liked this? I, yeah, it was, that, it was, that was my life, yes. Mm. Wow. So when you got into it, was how was the, like, how was it? Was it illegal back during that time, like, to where they was, because this ain't nothing new. This been going on since the beginning of time. Right. Mm -hmm. So what was the, what was the, because now they they got all kind of stuff they label it as right. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the most Escort. popular one? They, no, no, they right. label Human it something trafficking. else. Human, Human trafficking. trafficking. Yeah. That's the way they name it. And nothing changes. And you could attest to this because you older than me and you've been you. But why are they label it human trafficking? You're not taking them out of state. Because mm, it's a way mm, for its society to lock men up. Yeah, that's what it is. I just was trying to understand like what was the what was the process of charging you during that time? What did they consider it, prostitution probably, or how would they word it? How oh, would they incriminate you? I, like I said, I had a 20 count secret indictment, uh, five different women. 20? 20 counts, yeah, five different women, and the charges were pandering. That's what they labeled it yeah, as? Pandering, yeah. And was it a serious thing at that point to where you felt like you might be going down? Or no, you? No, because back in the day, uh, you needed two people to corroborate each other. And even the women that uh, they charged me with, they weren't mad at me or anything. They had a, a secret grand jury nobody knew about. And every woman that called a prostitution case had to go in front of this grand jury. And one of the first names out of their mouth was, do you know... Uh, Scooby Doo was my partner, and me, Delicious. Do you know Delicious? Scooby Doo and Delicious. Right. And uh, if they said yes, then they quizzed them more. You know, um, one girl, they said I, I, I assaulted her with a glass. And uh, she came to jail to see me. She was out of Detroit, and she came to jail to see me. And I was like, uh, what is this about a glass? She said, I don't know, what them people talking about? She said, if it hadn't been a chair, a dog chain, or a golf club, I would understand, but we didn't know what kind of glass we're talking about. So she said, well, what you want me to do? I said, hey, get ghost. And that's what she did. She never signed any papers. None of them had ever signed any papers against me. And when it came down to it, the case fell apart, you know, all of them. Well, all twenty, all twenty counts. Yeah, one, 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 uh, one of them was for rape. They charged me with rape. They tried to hit you with rape charge. Yes. How and did? How was they trumping that up? Well, here's the thing. The year before that, I had a woman, and I met her in a bar, and she got with me, put her to work, and after a couple months, she left. And so I was, I had gone back to college and I was uh, walking down the street and I saw a police car. Well, I saw an unmarked car. 
I said, them look like police. Wonder who they going to get. Yes, what? Well, they came straight to me. You. They arrested me, put me in the back of the car, and when we're going down Florida Avenue, we make a left downtown as you make a right, and I'm wondering where they're taking me to. And they're taking me to a juvenile facility. And I'm like, what, what is going on? They tell me this girl was a juvenile. And I'm trying to tell them that I know, I don't, I don't deal with juveniles. I don't have any, you know, some men do, I don't. That's a no-no. Mess with nobody's kids. And I told them and told them and told them. And I had to spend money, get my woman a lawyer because they charged her too. Uh, how old was the juvenile that they was trying to say that you had raped? Oh, she was uh, 19. 19. So, uh... But is 19 a juvenile? I thought it was no. 18 and under. No. They were saying she was 16. Oh, okay. They were saying she was 16. Yes. And I was trying to tell them that woman is not no 16, but anyway, I had to go to court. Uh, I had to get a lawyer. I got my woman a lawyer. And we get in there, and they dropped the charge. Mm. And yeah. the reason they dropped the charge, they found out she was no juvenile. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that same case, the next year, they left off the statutory rape and just charged me with rape. With rape. And, uh, you know, if it was rape, it would have been rape from the guinea up. It wasn't. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. But I ended up beating it. So you be 20 counts. Yeah, at, at once on the secret indictment. On yeah. secret indictment. Yeah. So every girl never signed no papers, none yeah. of that. And none of them were mad at me. None of them was mad at you. No, as a matter so, of fact, one girl was uh, on the, I was on the third floor at the jail, and she was on the second floor, and we would send kites. Okay. And she would put money in my account. No. So how long, like, like when you had these girls, how many girls did you have up to at one time? To be honest, I don't know, maybe five or six. Five or six? Yeah. You, they all stay in the same house with you? No. no. Where did they live? Uh, I had different houses. I had uh, apartments. I had condos. I had houses. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and during this time, when did you get shot? Was this later on or during that time? Yeah, we're getting way ahead of So you went house. way, oh, it's way on down. After that, I got shot in 19, after I got out of jail. Mm. Like I said, I spent seven months in jail. And uh, my mother, always listen to your mama. Uh, she would tell me things. And if I didn't listen, I'd end up regretting it. Mm. She told me to leave town, go back to Michigan. So I did. And uh, I got into it with a friend of mine, uh, about his woman. Was was this just a this a relationship? Now it's got nothing to do with pimping. Nothing at all. Nothing. And you done took your homeboy's gal? No. <laughs> no. Well, why would why why well, would he get mad at you about her? Cause I hit her in the, I hit her upside the head. Why? With a uh, broomstick. You hit her with a broomstick. Broke broke the broomstick over her nose. Why? You broke her nose. No, what I is, broke the broomstick. He broke the broomstick. Well, she had a knife. What's your knife? Yeah, I get it. And I know uh, that she would use it. So I just went upstairs and uh, we were living together. Yeah. You, oh, her, yeah. and him. Yes. yes. But he, she was coming after you with a butcher knife. Yeah. Why? Well, um, the week before that, she was doing, well, he had two women. Mm -hmm. And the one, me and her was cool, but the other girl, me and her wasn't that cool. No, wait a minute. You said, were they both staying there? No. So the one that wasn't staying there is the one that wasn't cool with you? No, she was the one that was. Cool. That was. That was, okay. My mother uh, told me I couldn't burn no incense in her house. Okay. And. I said, why? She said, because I know you smoking that shit and you're not going to smoke it in my house. I know mm -hmm. that's right. So I told my partner, he said, well, hey, man, I got an extra bedroom. You can have it. Okay. So, okay, cool. And then, like I said, this other woman, she, um, 
don't know, she just didn't like you. Right. So one night, um, Friday night, we sitting around having some drinks, and I tell him, and he said, uh, why don't you like him? And she said, because you didn't ask me. If he could live here. If he could live here. This is in my name. And my partner said, well, hey, it might be in your name, but this is my joint. He's welcome here. So, okay. So I go upstairs to the bathroom. I come back down, and she has taken my drink and poured it out in the sink. And I tell him, man, see that this one I'm talking about. And when I said that, I'm sitting down. She leaps over the coffee table, and she got long fingers. She's trying to scratch me up and everything. So um, I said, I can't stay here. I left. So um, some, some days went by, and uh, I moved in with a friend of mine. And I could see my old apartment. And uh, I went over. I made sure there was nobody there. I had a key. I went in to get my stuff. Now I'm moving out. So I'm talking to a friend of mine, and she comes through the door. And um, I'm watching her. She goes into the kitchen and gets a big old butcher knife out the drawer. And I said, you know, I tell my buddy, I said, man, you know what, I'm, I had enough of this. I'm getting ready to whoop her ass. So I went upstairs and got this broom handle, and I came back downstairs, and I whacked her in the head with it across her face. And she went through, oh, what did you hit me for? And then I moved her, and there was the butcher knife for that butcher knife. So then she ran upstairs and started barricading herself uh, in her bedroom. My bedroom is across from theirs. It's probably so calling I, the police. Uh, I know. Okay. No, so, you got no phones like this. You act like this 19. Uh, <laughs> there ain't nobody got no damn phone. She got to pull that line. You got to get the rotary dial phone. That hole is stuck to the wall sometimes. You got to drag that through the house. This a different time. You, the, the time you think you got a cell phone. No, hell no. She, this is a party line or or, 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 or private line. Y'all yeah, got a yeah, phone, phone on the wall. or yeah, yeah. Two phones. Two phones. Yeah. Two phones on the wall. No, one one in the kitchen and uh, one in the living room. But you got to drag that line. How far would that line go? Oh, not that far. See what I'm saying? Can go in the room with it. So anyway, <laughs> I heard her, you know, moving furniture and everything. Mm -hmm. and I didn't care. I grabbed all my stuff up, put it in a sheet, and I left out there like a hobo with my clothes and stuff on my back. And um, I contacted him. and tried to contact him. We didn't uh, hook up. So the next week, Friday night, me and my partner that I had moon in with, we go into the liquor store. And we go get some liquor. So I come out of the liquor store and I see his car at this bar. And I said, I'm gonna go in and talk to my man. He said, man, that nigga crazy. Don't go in there. I said, I got this. Me and my man had grown up together. We, had, we grew up together. Uh, we lived in the same house. Yeah, but you don't need this old lady in the wait, nose. Wait, wait, yeah, but now, <laughs> uh, we had grown up together. Uh, until the fourth grade, we lived in a four-family flat. Fourth grade, he moved. Two weeks later, I moved down the street from where he had moved to. We stayed together until he went in the Army and went to Vietnam uh, when we were 17. So like I said, we had grew like, up bro together. like brothers. Yeah, up like brothers. Mm -hmm. And I went into the bar and he was shooting pool. And I said, hey, I'm gonna shoot with you. He told me, I'm shooting by myself. I'm like, okay. So I waited and waited. He finished the game. So I leaned up against the pool table. I, I totally, I, I, I don't have my guard up. This is my dog. Uh, and he asked me what happened. I told him, he said, well, yeah, I can understand that. He said, but why did you try to break into my bedroom door? Oh, she added extra. Unbeknownst to me, she had barricaded the door mm -hmm. and then jumped out the window. On the Dang. Floor. No, she got on to the, uh, the thing that covered the uh -huh. floor. She's scared she running for her life. You get hit uh, with a broomstick, you'll do some things when you get and, hit across uh, your damn like face. I said, I said, man, that didn't happen. Man, I wouldn't do that. 
He wasn't mad about me. He was mad about me because I tried to break into his bedroom. bedroom. Right. So when I took my eye off him, he swung at me and missed. And I said, let me get out of here. So I'm, like I said, I've been drinking, half drunk. And I ran out, and uh, he chased me out the bar. And we got outside, and he grabbed me and spun me around. And reflexes kicked in, and I stabbed him. Damn. Stabbed him. In so the you stabbed him first. Boom. When he, when he spun me around, my reflexes kicked in, and I had a knife, and I stabbed him. And then that's when he pulled out his twenty-five. Nigga hit you with the twenty-five. Pow. And shot you right in the shot head. Shot you in the head. Where you shot shoot me, you at? Shot me right here. Shot you in your jaw. Right, right, right. It here. came out. Came out right here, and but it broke the it broke the skull. Mm -hmm. It broke the skull in the back. But it didn't have enough strength to break the skin. Mm. So they took me to the hospital, and uh, I want them to take the bullet out. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, I wake up, and I'm looking at the stars. I'm like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And I was unconscious. It wasn't for that long. Mm -hmm. And I feel my face, and I take my hand away, and there's a drop, just a drop of a blood. blood. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking the bullet, you know, I can graze you. Graze me. And I run across the street to this girl that I had turned out. Uh banged on her door and she said who is it and I'm hollering my name but because you didn't realize your voice was messed up right couldn't hear it you couldn't hear so it. she wouldn't open the door so I laid down and they, she had artificial <laughs> turf on her uh, grass for the grass on her uh, porch mm -hmm. so I laid there on the artificial grass and then some people came up and knocked on the door and stepped over me. Mm. <laughs> and I was drunk. And they stepped over me and went in. I was like, and then I get up and beat on the door, they won't let me in. So then I run down the street and I knock on another door and break the window. And the woman came downstairs with shotgun. And her daughter said, Mom, that's D, don't shoot. And so uh, I could hear ambulances around. So they called the ambulance police. came. And picked me up mm -hmm. and took me to the, the hospital. hospital. He was in one one room, and I was in the other. And it's so funny. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom, and they wouldn't let me go. They wouldn't let me go. I'm like, yeah, because he was right there. No, no, oh. I had nothing to do with okay. it. It's, it's, everybody that came in is like, hey, this guy's got a bullet in his head. Come and feel it. And I'm like, well, take it out. They said, no, we're not going to take it out. So he's still there. Oh no. Okay. They said, we're going to send you to Detroit and uh, have them do a shock trauma unit. Mm -hmm. And it took them about an hour to come and get me. You could have driven in a car. You know, we're waiting on a helicopter. Don't you want to ride in a helicopter? <laughs> I'm like, baby, I was in Vietnam. If I never see another helicopter, they're, they're loud, they're noisy, they stink. <laughs> so they wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. So I pissed there, but I pissed all over everything. Mm -hmm. So finally, the helicopter comes, and the pilot says to me, uh, they wanted to put a catheter in. I'm like, what's that? And they tell Ugh. me, what? I said, oh, no, please, please, please. So I tell the pilot, listen here, man, I promise you. I I'm not pee. pee no more. Oh, no. <laughs> he said, you promise? I said, yeah. Okay. Got on there, and uh, they took me to the hospital and <laughs> took it out. I spent uh, 20 22 days in the hospital. Yeah. Mm -mm. Do you still have that bullet? Did they give you the no, bullet? No, they didn't give it to me. Those people be keeping bullets as souvenirs. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've kept a few for my buddies. Yeah. Have you seen Have you seen that man again? Yes. Matter of fact, we are, like I said, it, it was... So y'all reconciling y'all friends yeah, again? Yeah. Yes, I covered all that in the book. Yeah, because my my daddy came, to, my mom and him was divorced. Mm -hmm. And uh, my daddy came to town. And I had been home, and uh, he said, you ready? I knew what he was talking about. I said, yeah. <laughs> so we went down to his mother's house. He was, him and the girl split up. He stayed with his mother. And uh, I went in, his mama hugged me and everything, talked about us, and then uh, he came downstairs. 
and my dad said, you two niggas trying to kill each other? And we said, yeah. And that was it. Wow. And that was it. Uh, how, so how was the conversations after that, doctor? A man done shot you in the head, you done you stabbed him in his him. chest. Yeah. How was the conversation as a friend after you after well, all this happens? Well, you know what? Um, we didn't we didn't we didn't get together that much, and I, much. I I left town shortly after that. Yeah, yeah. but at least y'all did did reconcile your differences. Yeah, we did. And then I used to come back to town all the time, and a, a woman, my aunt Chloe, that he called Aunt Chloe, uh, came to me and said, "You know what?" She said, he thinks that you still want to do something to him. And she told him, he's, he's not like that. And he listened to her. And man, like I said, to this day, we, we call him, my kids call him uncle. Wow. His kids call me uncle. Wow. We cool in the game. That's it crazy. Should, it should have never It happened. should have never happened. Mm -hmm. It should have never happened. But all over a woman, every yeah. time. Yeah. Every time. But. Do you think that if you didn't stab him, he wouldn't have shot you? Yeah, but I, you, you probably, well, I don't know. Mm. I can't say that. Like I say, uh, I was, had been drinking. Mm. Uh, and I bet I day. Survival mode kicked in. <laughs> Let's talk about this assault on the police officer. Oh, yeah. Um, I had just got a new, a new place down near the on 13th and Mass, well, the track is on 14th Street. And uh, I wasn't feeling well. So instead of going home, I went to this other spot. Well, I'm in the bed, and the girl didn't know I was there. She brought a date to the joint. And she saw me in the bed, so she closed the door, and she goes, take the date out in the living room. Well, it was the police. So they came in telling me about uh, get up. For what? Well, you're in the, what am I under arrest for? You know. So they can't tell me what I'm under arrest for because there, there ain't nothing to charge mm -hmm. me with. So, and, and these are vice police. They know me and I know them. And um, so I'm sitting on the bed in my pajamas and two beat cops walk in, one black and one white. And I'm talking to these guys that I know, and this guy hauled off and slapped me. And again, instincts kicked in, and I punched him. And then all of them died when I... Of course. Uh, they you folded it up. Yeah, you bowled it up. They was punching him more than they was punching me. <laughs> So uh, they gave me assault on the police officer for that. And uh, I ended up beating it. You ended up beating that too? Yeah. You know, all these cases, I never had a trial. Not, okay. Not one. Not Every one. time. Every time. Well, that, that's, and, and that's something else because at the end of the day, your reputation exceeded you. So how was it? Like, you, you, did you not just stay in the same neighborhood? Because no, if I you couldn't so. stay with all these felonies, with all these assault charges, all this stuff you was doing, you had a reputation. Yes. So well, you, you got to understand. Uh, I was in D.C., but I also, I was on the East Coast. Uh, that's why I didn't like California. Mm -hmm. You go 500 miles from, say, San Francisco, you hit Bakersfield, Salinas, but you're still in the same legal jurisdiction but you go from dc i could go i could hit baltimore uh atlantic city my favorite new york city mm -hmm. philadelphia and boston all within 500 miles of each other so i was up and down the right the west coast is the left coast east coast is the right coast yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. I got you. Let me let me ask you this, man. You had a bunch of cards when I looked through the book. Um, what's your what's what's the one of the favorite cards that you owned? Car oh. Fifty seven Fleetwood Cadillac. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's a big body. Yeah, big. Yeah. I had that. Uh I got rid of it in two thousand and 14. Wow, so you had it that many years? Yeah. How much did it go for? 
Yeah, and Sydney took it. Oh, the city took it? Yeah, you know, I, um, he just gave it away. Yeah, that's what happened. Something was wrong with it, and I didn't have the money to fix that. So I had, I had horses. So I took it out where I kept my horses at and parked it. And man, uh, the weeds grew up all up under and everything. So finally, I get enough money to fix it. And I bring it home and I got it parked. And the city said it was a uh, hazard. No, a blight. Oh. Blight. And took it and told me I had to give him $1,000. Be like, keep it. And you still can't park it in the backyard. And I had no Wasn't worth the problem? No, and I had just bought a boat. Oh, you just bought a I boat? Just, I just bought me a <laughs> boat. So, yeah, so. you know what? I'll spend $1,000. I kept the car from, I think, 1990 to 2014. Wow. Yeah. Drove wow. it all over. All drove, drove the heck out of it. Everywhere. New York. Man. So when you look back, man, when you look at the way the, the you know the the game is today, uh, you know the, I know you've been out the game for a long time, mm -hmm. but just seeing how they do on the internet, that's just uh, the internet game <laughs> versus the way it used to be. What what do you think is the biggest difference? Well, even though I was in D.C., the game was small enough to. Somebody knew you. If you didn't, if, if, if you didn't know somebody cross country, you you weren't you weren't anybody. And you weren't by your reputation. You weren't by your reputation. Wow. And here, these people, they just pick up a name and a whoop whoop de whoop, and I'm so and so and so and so, and ain't got a clue. Wow, tell us about tell, go Yeah, ahead. I was, was going to say, tell me about the book that you wrote, Dillinger and the Young Blood. I wrote that book second. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, I'm talking in the 30s, mm. uh, my family owned a rooming house on one side, apartments, and on the other side uh, was the main house. And it was an after hours. And I went spending some quite a bit and I, I never could figure out what that smell was in the house. And then when I finally became old enough to go into a bar, that was the smell I was smelling. It's my it smelled like a bar. And my grandmother and my great aunt, they owned that and they ran it. Uh black people could not live and stay in hotels. Mm -hmm. So when you went to a city, you would find out where the rooming houses were, and that's where you would go. And my family owned it, and uh, this guy, Herbert Youngblood, had been there uh, to get alcohol during Prohibition. Mm -hmm. uh, prohibition, people were making bathtub gin, but we lived so close to Canada, you would hop in the boat, and you can be in Canada and get you the real stuff. Mm -hmm. So when they uh, broke out of jail, that's where they headed after they robbed a couple of banks. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, uh, I had a tricycle. And my Uncle Jeannie, he was my cousin, but because of our age difference, he was my Uncle Jeannie. I used to ride my tricycle in the back of his limousine. In the back of his limousine? Back of his limousine. And it was a big hump. You know, it had a big hump on the floor back in the day. And I would ride from the door to that hump, hit that hump, and it would push me back, and I would ride <laughs> back. He would ride me around the neighborhood. Wow. And we used to hear the stories and uh, about this big-time gangster that was killed there. And I was fascinated by it. You know. And this gangster, because I heard you told this story. Is that the same one we see in the movies and we read about? Well, John Dillinger. Right. Is that the same yes. one? Yes. He was the first. Western. Public, no, no. He was the first public enemy number one, so named by J. Edgar Hoover. Right. He was in Tucson, Arizona, 
and his hotel room caught on fire while he was gone. And they gave the firemen 50 bucks to go in and get their luggage, which was all the guns. Well, the police put two and two together, found out it was John Dillinger, and put him on a plane, private plane, back to Illinois. Uh, excuse me, Indiana, to face charges for bank robbery. Mm. And Mr. Herbert Youngblood was a black man that had a thing with a, a small knife. He was a whittler. And he was in jail for murder. Now, the first time he had been to prison, he had been to prison for securities fraud. There's only one known picture of him. I think I showed that to mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know, he was, his mugshot, he was in a three-piece suit. Wow. Yeah. And he really didn't do what they said he did, but he went to prison for two years, and he got out. Prohibition was over, and uh, he was gambling. He was a gambler. He could count cards. And he went to a card game. He was the only black guy there, and caught him cheating. And uh, he attempted to leave, and they wanted to strip him. Mm. And he told him, you know, you can have the money on the table, but I'm not taking my clothes off. And the uh, guy produced a gun, and he was quicker and shot and killed him. Now, normally it would be self-defense, but because the guy he shot was a fruit peddler, white, Italian, they charged him with murder. So he was in jail for murder. And they just so happened to put John Dillinger in the same jail. And John Dillinger saw him with a little pen knife carving. So he said, you know, can you carve me a gun? He said, well, I could, but it's not going to fool anybody. So uh, he carved the gun, and Dillinger put some shoe polish on it, painted it black. And that's what they stuck into a guard's side, and he thought it was a real thing, so he opened up. And they got machine guns and everything, escaped from jail, and uh, went to Idaho, robbed a bank. A couple days later, they robbed another bank in Iowa. And uh, let's see, I think it was 1.6 million in today's money. Then they doubled back to Chicago, and from Chicago, they headed to Michigan. Why? I don't hmm. know. Wow. And you can but, find, find all that in this book. Yes. Oh, yeah. Man. But they... Um, like I said, oh, they, 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 uh, somebody told that they were in town. Mm -hmm. The police didn't believe it. They didn't send enough people out. <laughs> and uh, the undersheriff saw the guy in the store part and grabbed the 38 out of his waistband. And dude went to the small of his back with a 45 and shot the undersheriff and killed him. Mm. And then there was a big shootout. And the talk is that my Uncle Jeannie shot him in the back. Now, I gotta tell you about my Uncle Jeannie. My yeah. Uncle Jeannie was smooth. My Uncle Jeannie had blue eyes, straight hair, white everywhere except in this little town because everybody knew he wasn't white. Yeah. But anywhere else he was, he was white. He was white. Yeah. And his parents was both black or? No, no. no I'm, I've got a picture, I've sent the email to you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, his mother was very light complexed his father was white. Okay, yeah. got it. And uh, they did it for the money. Mm -hmm. you know, I asked my aunt years later, how much money was found? Right. And she said, none. And then she started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was lying. But oh, she, wow. Never, never would tell me how much money was found. Of course, that's the quickest way. And Uncle Jeannie had to, he had to leave town. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he left town. Uh, because Dillinger was a popular exactly. guy, and he was afraid for his life. For his life, and he left in the thirties, and he didn't come back until the fifties. Like I said, I was riding my bike in the back of his limo. I wouldn't he, have came back at all. Well, he figured it blown over. Dillinger mm. was dead 
or so mm. he thought, you know. And he used to walk around the neighborhood with uh, cowboy hats on and uh, denim jackets and a couple of forty fours on, on his, his waist, side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like in and, the movies. Yeah, like cowboys. Wow! But they were replicas, were real. Mm. And what he would do is he would switch them out for the real thing. So I'd be scared. Know. Yeah, you'll never know, but somebody might catch you that day when uh, you have that replica on. Yeah, well, hey, like I said, he was down in the hood, so, <laughs> hey. Wow. I just looking at all those pictures, man. Your style changed so much over the years, man. You didn't, you didn't change styles. Well, you have to. Because of the times. Everything must change, everything. You know? But how easy work was it for you to adopt to the change? It was... Hard. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I did the math. I went from, um, I had been all over the United States. Uh, West Coast dogged me. I didn't get no money out there. Plus, I still had a condo that I was paying rent for. And um, came back and ended up in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And I caught a case in Toronto. And finally, after I beat that case, uh, I had two two sons. I had two different women, and they were at my mother's. Uh, no, I had one with me. I had the baby with me. Okay. And my other son, he was with my mother, and she told me, I'm not going to raise your children. Mm-hmm. And I thought about it. I had done everything that I wanted to do except be filthy rich. Mm -hmm. And anything that I could possibly do, I would be repeating myself. So you know what? I got out the game. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's the reason why you got out of the game. Yeah, I was tired. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. I would consider you a ladies man because of all uh -huh. the things that you've uh -huh. been through and so forth. I, if I, I would love for you to describe what would be a perfect date with you. A perfect date with me? Yeah. Well, at what? At at which time? What time? Okay, tell me two times. Tell me a perfect date when you were probably in your say thirties. Cause I'm not gonna okay. say twenties. Right. And a perfect date now. Okay. Perfect date in my thirties. I didn't date. Mm. I had women. Women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so you don't even take working women on dates? Oh, yeah, we would go. We would go out. Sometimes we would go out uh, alone. Sometimes we would go out as a family. I was, I was wondering. I was yeah, like, dang, yeah, they, they, yeah. they like to date, too? Yeah, but I didn't call that no date. <laughs> it was, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now a perfect date. Uh, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just, I, I, I like to uh, ask these questions. Like, which one was the best? You know, the best, the most loyal girl that you ever had as far as when you had them working on that track. Loyal? Loyal, bro, that, that wasn't going to run off. and. Oh, I had, I've had, I had one for seven years. This was the one? No, she wasn't the one, but she stayed with me for seven years. She was the one? Yeah, seven years. Seven years is a long stretch, yeah, and, and, yeah. and nobody peeled you for it. She stayed Eventually with you. she left, yeah. She, Eventually she, she but, left. but you kept as long as you could. Yeah. Do do pimps ever fall in love with I their... Every, every hoe I ever had, I was in love with them. Every you was. One. That's right. In love with them. That's right. Every hoe every, you ever had. Every hoe I ever had, I was in love with her ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, explain that to me. Explain the love and the extent of love. Well, there's different levels. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, if a woman loved me enough to give me some money, I love her back. It's just that simple. Would you have ever married one? Yeah, I did marry. Matter of fact, I married a hoe. You did? Yeah. How yeah. long did y'all stay married? Well, uh, I, I tell the story six days. <laughs> <laughs> you why? stayed married to the hoe for six days? Six days. Oh, well, no, no, why no, did no, you no, marry no, no. her? Listen, listen. I, I'll tell you why I married her. Uh, my younger brother was married. All my partners was married. You just had the fever. Everybody was married. So, I, you know, okay, I'm going to get married. It. And why did you choose her over all the other hoes you had? Well, at the time, um, she was, as a matter of fact, she was headed to the Army when I caught her. Mm. And uh, she's supposed to go into the Army on Monday. 
And uh, and you recruited said, her. She said, "Yeah." She said, "If you can keep me till Monday, uh, I'll stay with you." So she called the case. I think Saturday night I didn't get out of jail until Monday. <laughs> That's <laughs> your trick. Yeah, and she we we, we stayed together. Yeah, man. Yeah, wow. Mary. Well, I tell you what, man, the the ladies, man, the book is here. Dillinger Young Bloods, Wooden Gun. Hey, man, listen, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. What's the website? How can people get this book? How can they get either oh, one that, of these books? That's on Amazon.com. On oh, Amazon, just a ladies, man. It's there. And, and the ladies, the S is a dollar sign, right? Yeah, no. No? no, I just did oh, that for the You cover. just did that for the yeah. book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just checking. Yeah. Well, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Say, man, listen, we love you. Nothing but a tie. Can I come back? Because you know, it's a whole Yeah, thing. you can yeah, come yeah, back anytime. You, 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 you can come you know, back every here, time. Here, here, here's the thing. You know, I was talking with Ken and mentioned something about buying pussy, and I told the truth, yeah, I bought some pussy. Yeah, yeah. 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 In Vietnam, I uh -huh. couldn't speak the language. I didn't have no girlfriend. Yeah, I bought some pussy. Did that make you feel bad of any way? No, hell no, it did Why? Because most time they say pimps don't, you know, yeah, you're not tricking. I was, I was a Marine in Vietnam facing death every day. Why do I care about what a motherfucker think? So you had to buy that coochie over there. Everybody was buying it. Everybody was. Because I've met some other um, ex-military. I remember this guy. He has Agent Orange. He had yeah. gotten that. But he even used to, even after military, mm -hmm. he would take frequent trips to Taiwan. Yeah. All the time. I went to, you know, we call them skivvy runs. <laughs> yeah. We would go, they would pick us up uh, in the morning at the flight deck and would fly us to Yuban, Yuban, Thailand, mm -hmm. and um, drop us off. And we could uh, do whatever we want as long as we were back at the flight deck by six o'clock. And shit. Because he said that's the cheapest you could get, but yeah. it was good. It was it was it was it was a release. Is what mm. it was. <laughs> how many how many of the military people probably left babies over there? Oh, who knows? I wonder sometimes <laughs> whether or not I did. You know, <laughs> uh, a few a few of the guys, not Marines, but I, I knew a few guys in the army that married women from and over them back. Okay, and yeah, because those type of women from over there they say that are more submissive. Yeah, uh -huh. so that's the reason why they would do that. Well, is that true? Well, they are submissive, yeah. Why they would do it? I don't know. Man, every woman, every woman out there ain't hoeing. She ain't, mo, mo, yeah. Some of them, you got some good women over there in where, Taiwan? Thailand. Uh, Thailand. You got some good women over there, too? Yeah, they got good women everywhere. That's right. Know, yeah, every, every, not everybody. every hoe ain't going. That is. You know what I'm saying? Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And we out.